All right, let's dive into this 50-year-old patient case, presenting with acute on chronic abdominal pain. Chronic abdominal pain in this age group can arise from various causes, and imaging is key to making an accurate diagnosis. We've got a plain abdominal radiograph to start with. Right away, there are a few striking features that jump out. First, we see surgical clips in the right upper quadrant, indicating prior surgery, likely a cholecystectomy. This could be relevant given the patient's symptoms and possible complications from gallstone disease or biliary pathology. Now, a very significant finding here is the speckled calcification extending from the epigastrium to the left hypochondrium. This pattern strongly suggests chronic pancreatitis, and more specifically, pancreatic calcifications. Chronic pancreatitis often results from alcohol, alcohol abuse, and over time leads to the of pancreatic tissue, causing these calcifications. But we'll need to consider other causes like biliary disease, genetic predispositions, or even autoimmune disorders. Another crucial observation here is the dense aortic, iliac, and femoral calcification. This tells us the patient has significant vascular calcifications, possibly indicative of underlying atherosclerotic disease. Vascular calcifications like these are commonly seen in patients with long-standing risk factors such as diabetes, hypertension, or hypercholesterolemia. It adds another layer of complexity to the patient's clinical picture, especially if they are also diabetic, which chronic pancreatitis can lead to. As we go through the rest of the radiograph, the bowel gas pattern is unremarkable. There's no sign of obstruction, no free gas that might suggest perforation, and no abnormal gas within the bowel wall itself. Similarly, there's no gas in the biliary tree, ruling out pneumobilia, and the spine shows some degenerative changes, which are common at this age. Based on these findings, pancreatic calcifications, vascular calcifications, and surgical clips from prior cholecystectomy, the most likely diagnosis is chronic calcific pancreatitis, likely due to alcohol abuse. Chronic calcific pancreatitis is a result of repeated episodes of acute inflammation, leading to fibrosis and calcification within the pancreas. Over time, the pancreas loses its endocrine and exocrine function, which could explain why this patient might also be dealing with secondary diabetes. In terms of differential diagnosis, we should still consider chronic pancreatitis due to cholelithiasis, especially if there's a history of biliary disease. Additionally, we need to rule out diabetic ketoacidosis as a cause of the acute on chronic presentation, particularly if the patient is diabetic, which could lead to metabolic acidosis and acute abdominal pain. So what's next? We'd need to get the surgical team involved to assess for possible complications like pseudocysts or abscesses. An ultrasound would be the first go-to imaging modality, especially to check for any biliary stones or complications in the pancreas. If there's a concern about more significant structural damage or mass formation, a CT scan would be the next step to fully evaluate the pancreas and surrounding areas. Now, let's break down a little more about chronic calcific pancreatitis. As mentioned, alcohol abuse is a major risk factor responsible for 20 to 40% of cases. Over time, repeated inflammation leads to the typical rosary crown appearance, calcifications in the pancreatic duct, that alternate with areas of stenosis and fibrosis. These changes are a result of the ductal obstruction and parenchymal damage caused by chronic inflammation. There's also tropical calcific pancreatitis, a unique subtype seen in certain parts of the world, and other forms of genetic pancreatitis, such as those caused by mutations in the cystic fibrosis gene or the cationic trypsinogen gene. Hyperparathyroidism is another metabolic condition that can cause pancreatic calcifications, especially when linked to hypercalcemia. Moving on to imaging. On CT, chronic pancreatitis shows classic findings like ductal dilation, parenchymal atrophy, and calcifications. As the disease progresses, the pancreas may become smaller due to fibrosis, and pseudocysts can form. In severe cases, pancreatic carcinoma becomes a concern as chronic inflammation increases the risk of malignancy. MRI can also be helpful, especially to evaluate for subtle changes in the pancreatic ducts and parenchyma. In early chronic pancreatitis, you might see mild duct dilation and wall irregularities. As the disease advances, calcifications will show up as signal voids on T1 and T2 weighted images, 
and fibrosis will become more evident, leading to gland shrinkage. On contrast-enhanced imaging, the fibrotic areas appear hypo-enhanced compared to the normal gland. Patients with chronic pancreatitis are also at an increased risk of diabetes, as the beta cells of the pancreas become damaged over time. In fact, vascular calcifications, as seen in this patient's case, are not uncommon in those with diabetes or other cardiovascular risks. These calcifications are more than just incidental. They tell us a lot about the patient's overall vascular health and raise concerns about macrovascular complications. In this case, managing the patient involves addressing both the chronic pancreatitis and the potential secondary complications like diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Imaging is crucial in monitoring disease progression and both CT and MRI are indispensable tools in assessing pancreatic morphology, identifying complications like pseudocysts, and ruling out malignancy. And that brings us to the end of another fascinating case. As always, stay tuned for more clinical pearls and radiology insights. If you're finding these discussions helpful, don't forget to follow me on Radiology Made Easy. Until next time, Keep learning, and we'll keep breaking down the complex world of radiology one case at a time.